Now, natural resource management that is also being done because of the help of the ecological studies. Endangered species protection. So, by the studies, ecologists and environmentalists get to know that a particular species in a particular uh, environment is actually getting threatened. So, by their studies, what they do is they take efforts like captive breeding, reintroduction methods and a greater understanding of species. So if ecological studies do not exist, we won't be able to save the endangered species existing around us. Forestry solutions. So ecologies, ecological concepts have been applied to forest management and are slowly being integrated into traditional forest science. So forestry solutions are also being actually helped by ecological studies. Agricultural solution. This is very important for us. So biological control is a technique that uses the natural enemies and predators of pests to control damage to the crops. It is based in part on knowing the ecology of the pest. So once you get to know the ecology of pests as well as ecology of the crops, you get to know that how can the plants be saved or the crop can be saved from the pests impact. Fishing solution. So ecological research has also identified obstacles such as dams uh, that fish encounter when returning to their breeding areas. This information has been used to help design structure for fish so that they can move around these obstacles to reach the breeding area. So if let's say a particular river is flowing in this particular way and a dam is being constructed, so the forest tree would be impacted in the areas over here on the this particular area from where the the water is flowing in this direction. So what ends up becoming the process is that the breeding area lies on this particular side and fishes usually swim back to those area to breed. But this dam after being constructed on the river prevents the fishes to go from right side to the left side. So once you identify that this phenomena is taking place which is being done by the ecological research you make dams which have uh, structures like that so that fishes move from those particular uh, cavities into the breeding ground. So the dam is also being utilized at the same time fishes are also not being harmed. Now let's have a look at natural resources conservation and management. So natural resources especially water and soil are essential for the function and structure of agricultural production system and for the overall social and environmental sustainability. So natural resources you know how important they are for us especially water and soil. Agriculture account for roughly 70% of the total freshwater withdrawal globally. So you can see that agriculture is the major consumer of the freshwater withdrawal all over the world globally we are talking about that. Farming also contributes to water pollution from nutrient and pesticides runoff and soil erosion. So whatever the fertilizers that we are using on our farms are uh, actually getting mixed in the water at later stages and that impacts or that gives rise to the water pollution. So now we know that without your improved efficiency measures, agricultural water consumption is expected to rise by about 20%. And that is to be done by 2050. So if you don't put in the efficient measures, agricultural water consumption is going to be expected to rise by 20%. So you know that uh, this particular factor is also taking place that is water pollution. At the same time, the agriculture water consumption which is already 70% of the total fresh water withdrawal that is also going to be on a rise. Climate change is already affecting water supply, we all know that and agriculture through changes in the seasonal timing of rainfall as well as with higher occurrence and severity of droughts and floods. So we know that climate change is already impacting the water resources around us. So we need to take measures or as we should say that we need to take natural resources conservation and management techniques in order to safeguard our water supply. One third of the planet's land is severely degraded and fertile soil is being lost at the rate of 24 billion tons a year. So you can look at the massive impact which is getting 
degraded that is the fertile soil that is being degraded 24 billion tons a year and that this is happening because of the consequences of bad farming practices like heavy tilling multiple sequential harvest and abundant use of agrochemicals so the usage of fertilizers and heavy tilling is actually impacting our fertile soil so that is getting degraded an increase of productivity can help push progress towards future food security and general well-being of producers and rural communities globally so we know that the population is on a rise so what we need is the increase in the productivity and that would end up resulting into the well-being of the producers that is the farmers and the rural communities which are existing globally but given the limited natural resource base on which agriculture depend so the natural resource base is fixed because the water resources are fixed for us the amount of land on which agriculture is practiced is also fixed for us so what do we need to do that we need a sustainable development we have because we have to increase the productivity at, while keeping the natural resource base same so what how can that be done by using the better management techniques and this is this is all response this could be responsible by management of the planet's natural resources so that is what will help us increase the productivity now this point says that by 2050 agricultural sector will face an unprecedented confluence of pressure there will be pressure on agriculture sector by 2050 with a projected 30 percent growth in global population so population is actually on a rise and that is resulting into pressure on agriculture sector the there's competition for incre increasingly scarce land the land resource is actually going down because of the rise in population water resources are going down energy resources also on a decline and th th this all this situation would intensify the production will have to increase to feed the world and adjust to the changes in the dietary patterns so with growing in the, the growth in the population would actually um, put pressure on us to increase the production agriculture depends to a large extent on the services provided by ecosystem agriculture is majorly dependent on the ecosystem surrounding it the sustainable agricultural approaches therefore focuses on optimizing the production while minimizing the negative environmental impacts and it also promotes the action for the pro uh, protection conservation enhancement and efficient use of natural resources so this is emphasizing the same point that we have said earlier that the sustainable sustainable agriculture which is uh, to provide the resources for the future generation actually focuses on optimizing production while minimizing the negative impacts on the environment now let's have a look at the natural resources what is natural resources so natural resources include the following items land on which the agriculture is being done water resources which provides for land and agriculture marine resources fisheries the minerals existing the forest the climate rainfall and the topography so all these uh, biotic and abiotic factors include the natural resources for us now let's have a look at the natural resources especially the land utilization patterns or the land resources as we say in india so this is the list or this is the table pertaining to the natural resources so you would see that the total geographical area of india in million hectares is about 329 and the total reporting area is 305 so when we say total reporting area which means that the data availability for this particular area is existing for us that is the land records are available for us for the this amount of area that is 305 million hectare now the barren land and the land put under non-agriculture uses is about 43 million hectares and the area under forest is about 70 million hectares the permanent pastures and grazing land includes 12 million hectares cultivable waste land is 12 million hectares again the fallow lands the lands which are actually empty right now but can be used for the agriculture and are being in fact used for agriculture is about 
26 million hectares. The net area sown. This is the net area we are talking about. That is, it is being sown once. That is, the actual area on which the agriculture is being done is 139. Area sown more than once is 34. 54, in fact, 54 million hectares. Then the total cropped area that we have is about 194 million hectares. So, this is the natural resource list of uh, India. So, uh, you should also remember it because these are the facts which can be utilized for while uh, taking an exam. Now, this nine fold classification of land use. So, how exactly is the land? land resource that we discussed in the previous slide is actually being classified so the statistics on land use are collected at present in the form of a nine-fold classification on a yearly basis so out of the geographical area of 329 million hectares the reporting statistics are available only for 305 million hectares right uh, now this makes up areas to the extent of seven percent is still not covered or classifiable under nine-fold cultivation. So you can see that there is a difference of a total geographical area from that of the reported area. So there is a lag of 7% of the area on which we cannot have any data or we, and it cannot be classified under this nine-fold classification. So this classification consists of forests, then area under non-agricultural usage, then you have barren or unculturable land on which nothing can be grown, uh, permanent pastures and other grazing lands. These are the grazing land, uh, land under miscellaneous tree crops. So the miscellaneous trees are actually being grown in a particular classification of the land. Then you have culturable waste, waste land. So the land which is uh, uh, lying idle waste but is culturable. Then another uh, classification is that of fallow land other than the current fallows that is the land which is empty right now current fallows so out of the total fallow land the current fallow is exists right now and the uh, fallow land which is uh, uh, actually being sown right now would come under fallow land so both of the categories fall under this uh, net area sown so this is going to be the entire area on which the particular uh, crops are being sown so the first one was that of forests so forests include all the lands classed as forest under any legal enactment dealing with forests or administered as forests whether state owned or private and whether wooded or maintained as potential forest land the area of crops raised in the forest and grazing lands or area open for grazing within the forest should remain included under the forest area so this is the definition given by the government so this is how government classifies forest so they are including all the legal enactment while administering forests and the private as well as state owned area can come under forest parts now area under non agricultural usage so what is the usage of this so this includes all the lands occupied by buildings, roads, railways or underwater. So this is, this cannot be the area existing in these part cannot be used for agricultural purposes. It can also include rivers and canals and other lands which put uses other than agriculture. Now the next classification was that of barren or unculturable land. So what does that mean? So it includes all the barren and unconsiderable land like mountain, deserts, etc. on which you cannot grow crops. So lands which cannot be brought under cultivation except at an exorbitant cost. So if you spend more money, you can actually make a surface in these particular areas on which agriculture can be done. But this is classed as unculturable whether such land is in isolated blocks or within the cultivated holding this is the definition of barren land now permanent pastures and other grazing lands include all the grazing land whether they are permanent pastures and meadows or not village common grazing land is included under this head so this is the area on which the uh, pastures actually uh, thrive on now land under miscellaneous tree crops so this includes all the cultivable land which is not included in the 
नेट एरिया सोन बट इज पुट टू सम एग्रीकल्चर यूज सम एग्रीकल्चर यूज इज ऑल्सो बींग डन अंडर द मिसलेनियस ट्री क्रॉप सो लैंड अंडर कैसुरीना ट्रीज थैचिंग ग्रासेस बैम्बो बुशेस एंड अदर ग्रोथ फॉर फ्यूल एट्सेट्रा विच आर नॉट इंक्लूडेड अंडर ऑर्चर्ड शुड बी क्लास अंडर दिस कैटेगरी सो दीज आर द कमर्शियल प्लांट्स बेसिकली कमर्शियल ट्रीज विच कैन विच आर ग्रोन स्पेसिफिकली ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर लैंड बट सिंस दीज आर नॉट क्रॉप दे कम अंडर मिसलेनियस पार्ट ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन नाउ what is culturable waste land so this includes lands available for cultivation whether not taken up for cultivation or taken up for cultivation once but not cultivated during the current year and the last 5 year or more in succession for one reason or the another so this includes basically the culturable waste land basically includes the lands which is available for cultivation but is not taken up for cultivation especially when you consider the current year as well as the last 5 years so such lands may be either fallow they are actually left uh, empty or they are also covered with shrubs and jungles but are not put to any use so this is the culturable waste land on which you can actually do agriculture but is not being practiced right now they may be assessed or unassessed and may lie in isolated blocks or within the cultivated holdings and land once cultivated but not cultivated for 5 years in succession should also be included in this category at the end of 5 years so after 5 years if nothing is being done on a particular land so you would know that this land is of no use right now so it is known as your culturable waste land because earlier there used to be agriculture being done on this now fallow lands other than current fallow so this was actually a little confusing earlier as well for some students so let's try to understand so this includes all lands which were taken up for cultivation but are temporarily out of cultivation for a period of not less than 1 year and not more than 5 year so fallow lands are actually the land which is uh, actually left empty for a reason for a particular specific reason so that uh, maybe the soil fertility grows back on that land the area is actually being used for agriculture but is presently empty but since we are using the term temporarily we mean that it can be used after some time and when you talk about current fellows you are talking about the same area or in fact it could even be different area which is kept fellow but especially for this particular area that is for a season specific if it is being left fallow it is being left open and you know that uh, if i have to leave it empty for a particular specific year or a season so that i can practice it later on it for example example if any seeding area is not cropped against the same year it may be treated as current fallow so current fallow and fallow land is quite close to each other so you should actually have a look at it in a closer way so you understand it better net area sown so this represents the total area sown with crops and orchards area sown more than once in the same area is counted only once so this is the major point when you talk about net area sown so area which is sown more than once in the same year is counted only once but if you consider the gross cropped area that would be counted twice now let's have a look at the water resources these are these also come under the head of natural resources but we are talking about the various water resources that we have and the figure we have over here is in million hectare meters so total precipitation that is the rainfall that we have had in 1974 the availability of water resources through the rainfall was about 400 million hectare meters you can see that in the year 2015 that is in the recent times it is about the same so rainfall is a major source for us 400 million hectare meters and you can see that in the table the highest number is existing for precipitation itself the immediate evaporation this is also another uh, water resource for us in 1974 about 70 million hectare meters and now presently around the same 
run off to surface water body the rivers basically 115 million hectare meters and it remains the same 115 percolation in the soil so the water which seeps down 215 215 it is remaining the same so you can see that these are the natural ones so the hand of the human is not uh, too much to an extent while extracting this particular water resource now the fifth point is talking about water utilization so this is the one which has grown over the years so 38 million hectare meters was the availability in 1974 presently it is 105 so what is water utilization so human effort is actually taking place in this particular category that is extracting from the groundwater and making sure that the surface flows is being utilized in a proper way so dams are also being used in this so you can see that the growth is from 13 to 35 when it comes to groundwater and from 25 to 70 million hectare meter when it comes to surface flows now let's have a look at the natural resources that is the fisheries so broadly fisheries resources in india is of two types inland fishery and marine fishery the principal rivers and their tributaries include canals lakes ponds comprising of this inland ones that is not talking about sea and when you talk about marine you're talking about oceans this comprises of two wide arms indian ocean and large number of gulfs and bays along the coast so this is the uh, marine and uh, in, uh, inland fishery classification 